a really, really small island called Vizcopico. It's the second biggest uninhabited island in Greece. Um, and I'll show you right now on the map where it is. You would not know where it is. So um, I picked this program because of like what the schedule is going to be like. So you did three weeks of excavation in Vizcopico, and then you worked in the archaeological Archaeological Museum in Pylos for a week. So it was a four week long um, excavation, but you did a little bit of both, which I love, because I know that excavation is not gonna be the main focus of my career, even though I am an archeology span major. There's a lot of different avenues. So I'm gonna lower my mask a little easier. <laughs> Have a good batch. Um, so yeah, it was uh, four weeks long. So the first three weeks, uh, you did not need to know anything about excavation. If you were a beginner or had no prior knowledge, that was completely okay. I had never excavated before and I was perfectly fine. They like taught you everything on site and it was pretty much like a lot of people that were on the same boat. Um, so we did a lot of stratigraphic excavation and I'll talk about the site right now. We did a lot of on-site documentation, reporting, processing of a lot of finds, specifically um, ceramics because that's most of what you find. And then the work at the museum, we did like we called processing of the find. So that was like uh, doing archaeological drawings of like the ceramic that we found and taking photographs of it. So the schedule was um it was nice. You would start your day at seven in the morning by already being on the island um, excavating so you would wake up like at six in the morning. And he would work about eight hours, so from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., which is pretty regular in excavations. You had a 30-minute uh, break, which is really, really nice. Um, then you had a one-hour lecture in the afternoon every day, Monday to Friday. The weekends were completely off. And then we also had to do a field journal, which is like to detail everything that you did that day, all of the finds, all of the strategic that you uh, excavated, which is very important and something that every excavation should have. And because we were working in groups, we that was mainly like a group uh, field journal that we worked together on, so they gave us time to do that. And then we also have daily readings about the site, about the police, classical archaeology, um, and that was with the professor and the supervisor of the whole excavation. And then we did have a final exam. Um, and I did this uh, course for credit, so I needed to do the final, unfortunately. But it was pretty easy. It wasn't too bad. So this will be goal. Okay. So Athens is all the way over here. Um, then we have the island of Baros, which is pretty big. Then you have Antiparos, and then this will be goal. So this is like more zoomed in. This is Naxos, Baros, Antiparos, this will be goal. It's pretty tiny when you look at it, you can't really find it. And we stayed in Antiparos the first three weeks. So we actually had to commute every day to get to the site. It was like a five minute boat ride, which was like the most peaceful part of my day. Because you could see like the floor, the ocean, it was super beautiful. Um, so a little bit about the site. Um, it used to be connected to the island of Antiparos, but it's not anymore. And there is a site uh, it's a settlement with a sanctuary de dedicated to Apollo and Artemis, two Greek gods. And um, it was, it's been systematically excavated since 2001, so every summer. And something that I think is super, super cool is that the island of this Bogo and the settlement there has never been referred to in a historical source. So, like, no one ever talked about this Bogo, no one ever wrote it down. So we know the name because of the ceramic piece that had the name of the site, and like we found it while excavating. Not me personally, but like in a past excavation. And the earliest activity dates to the third millennium BC. So this is like more of what it looked like. So we were staying up here, like you can see Slobos, that was one of the hotels we were at. And then this was like, all the restaurants, we have three little restaurants that we went to like every day. And then another hotel that we stayed at. And this is where we used to cross every day. So this is our view from like our hotel. And then we used to cross and this is like the uh, sanctuary to Apollo and Artemis. So it was pretty beautiful. One day we were crazy, we decided to swim back after the excavation, almost drowned. 
I made it. <laughs> I forgot like currents exist. Um, so the part that I was excavating on was not the sanctuary itself. Like that excavation was over. They did a restoration of it, so I wasn't able to like be around there, unfortunately. But I was working on a sister. And this cistern had been previously excavated the summer before ours, so I also wasn't like in charge of that. It was pretty deep. They told you like not to go near it because like if you fell, it would hurt a lot. Um, so we were working on like cisterns that were right behind it and a waterway that was partly uncovered. So we didn't know where it was going. We didn't know if it was connected. We didn't know, we knew it was from the arcade period, but we didn't know if it was connected to like the sanctuary itself, like if the ones that were constructing the sanctuary built it for them, for their use, or if it was actually for like the settlement that lived there afterwards. We don't know, so that's like a pending question of the excavation. Um, we did have a big group that year, so it was separated. So I was working in the cistern, and the other group was working like down there, closer to the sanctuary, in something called the Easter Complex where it was like a lot of rooms of the settlement. They found really cool ceramic pieces, like black plates, all of them painted, it was incredible. I found courseware and planeware, that's it. <laughs> but it was pretty fun. Um, so yeah, that's how it started. Like that's what it looked like when I first got there the first week. Um, and this is like stuff throughout. I was in charge of doing some of the drawings. So like Carolina and Priya that did like the drawing of the skeleton and the human remains. I did that, it was the sister wall. There was a collapse that happened, so we wanted to document where every single piece of the collapse was, which is super important for like future reference. Um, and this is like, when I finally found the piece of ceramic like two weeks in, it was pretty rare. So we were really happy about that. <coughs> and this is what it looked like on our last day. So, we did have started here, and we covered all of that. It connected to like a circular cistern towards the back. We don't know what it was, and we couldn't really figure out on our last day, so I can't tell you much about that. Um, these were the first two cisterns, and we found out that they connected with these like triangular poles right here. Uh, and yeah, it was like really, really cool. We didn't expect how big it was, but looks pretty clean. <laughs> and then after that, we uh, traveled to Baros where we stayed for a week, Sever Hotel. And there we did sorting, washing, and the processing of finds. We weren't working in the actual museum. The storage room was like a mile away. And it was tiny, and it looked like that. It was just boxes and boxes of everything they found at this Pico and like other islands around the Aegean. Um, so we worked there again from like 7 to 2 in the morning, but since it was so small, they had to split us up again. So part of our day, we were there, and then the second part was going around and like touring battles, because it was like a very historical place. So right here is the Venetian Fortress from the 1400s, and as you can see, like the round columns, those were like the column drums, like drums of like temples, the temple of the Athena that used to be there. The Venetians would just like cut it down and use it to build their own uh, fortress. So that was pretty cool. We did some sightseeing. Um, this is some of the ceramic that we washed. We took pictures of every single one. Uh, we did some some drawings of like, the more fancier ones, the important ones. Uh, the reason that we know the sanctuary we worked on belonged to Apollo was because we found an inscription of Apollo AP um, on one of the ceramic. That's also how we know the name of this Kupiko, because we found it on a piece of ceramic. So uh, there was only one organized trip, and that was to Dios. So if you don't know, that's like the most important sanctuary to Apollo, because that's where uh, he, him and his sister Artemis were born in the midst. So we went there. The top two are there. It was incredible. We only had like a couple of hours, which was definitely not enough. But we traveled from Paros to there, which was like an hour boat ride. We stopped at Mykonos for a few hours. We were in Mykonos longer than Delos, so it was pretty fun. 
And something that my friends and I organized was to an island called Naxos, which is right next to Baro, so it was also like less than an hour away. And we just did it for the weekend. Um, I know some other people went to Eos. Like everything is connected by ferries, and it's like less than an hour away usually, and it's pretty cheap. So a lot of us like just left for the weekend, so we just come back and like, start working again. But it was really, really fun. And a lot of since like Greece is a very popular destination, like uh, I met up with my family after and we traveled around, around, or some people met up like with the families beforehand on their like, travels. So it's really nice. And I don't know if you recognize him, but on our last day of excavation, uh, Tom Hanks came to the site. <laughs> so this is him right here and his wife. This is Rita, I think. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but the uh, island of Antipados became very popular recently because he bought a villa there. So we knew he had a house there, and like we knew he like would go there for the summer. So we always joked about him coming. Like there was always like big yachts like docked there, so we always thought it was him. He like just came on the second to the last day just to see the site, and we got to take a picture with him. Super nice. I'm standing right next to him. Kind <laughs> of pushed everyone for that. <laughs> Don't regret it, but yeah, it was incredible. Uh, yeah, so for applying to the fuel school, it's through an institution called College Year in Athens, CYA. It's a school, so it offers other programs, not necessarily excavation. Um, you do have to apply for credit if you want. If not, you can just go. But again, you have to get it pre-approved with the study abroad office, with the archaeology program, so that's definitely something that you need to think of. $500. Um, so yeah, the website is there. I will post this. Uh, something that was also useful, um, if you're thinking of doing an excavation, like a classical excavation, classical archaeology, I think you could apply for like a grant or a scholarship through the classics department. Um, I found out about it too late, so I couldn't apply, but I managed to get some funding from the archaeology program and um, other, it was, the, it was that stipend that we got because of COVID, that one. Like I saved up. <laughs> so yeah, but you can definitely ask the classics department since it is related to the classics. And I'm sure Bob can also help you like, look for other scholarships as well. Um, yeah, is there any questions? Yeah. How was the weather? <laughs> it changed a lot. So the first week it was super windy, which was terrible because all the dirt got in our eyes and we could not see. And we also decided to wear masks the first two days so we couldn't breathe. Um, then it got humid, which was disgusting. And then it was like manageable for like three days. And then it started raining, which is apparently super rare. But it did, and we had to like cut our excavation day short. But it was nice. It was like in the 70s, so it was like perfect weather. I know like other places are a lot worse. So honestly, like we got like the best. <coughs> Anything else? Cool. Well, I also have one more. Um, this is not something that I did for credit because I didn't know beforehand. Uh, but I did an internship in the Museum of, Museum of Anthropology and History in Mexico City. And I managed to get this with the help of uh, Professor Carvalho. I don't know if you guys have met him, but he specializes in Mesoamerica, so he works a lot in Mexico. He's now part of the provost office, so maybe you don't see him around that much. But when I was here uh, four years ago as a freshman, he was the undergraduate, um, how did you say? The director of undergraduate. <laughs> Thank you, the director. He was the director of undergraduate, so I met him through that, and he managed to put me in contact with someone that worked there, and it had always been my dream, because I'm from Mexico, so I go to that museum every year, and I always thought of working there, and never thought it could happen. But uh, he put me in contact with them, and I actually worked in the conservation office for a month, a conservation lab. And it wasn't anything really archaeology related, but I did work with like all of the artifacts that were coming in through the museum. And I thought it was important to give myself like another uh, different aspect or view uh, through like the conservation view. Because I know sometimes like conservationists and archaeologists have different views on things. 
they don't really care about the history or background of the artifact. Like sometimes I would ask them like where this was from or what period and like they just didn't know. And sometimes it's not their fault because it's a beauty, but yeah, it was just a different perspective, but I'm so glad I did it. It was for a month and I got to work on really cool stuff. Um, it was in Spanish, so uh, if you know Spanish, then that would be super useful. But I got to clean a lot of the artifacts, like see there with the brush and the glow vacuum. They were like figurines, like this small. And that was a storage room, like in the basement of the museum, which is humongous and has like more than half of the actual artifacts that are displayed. Um, then they also showed me what kind of salts can form on artifacts that have been underground for a long time. So you can see, like, they were showing me, like, the type of salts that form. Um, what they do, like, in response for that, they showed me how to do, like, solutions. So it was a lot of chemistry that I didn't really know. But they taught me how to do that. Um, this is me, like, in bigger rooms that's actually from bigger pieces. They taught us about the murals that um, are hand-painted in the museum. They have over 20 of them. They're, like, masterpieces, and they gave us a tour of that. Um, the dioramas that have been there since the museum opened in 1964, um, they helped, they like told me like how to fix them up a little bit, so that was really cool because it is pretty old for, for me at least. Um, that was uh, my supervisor helping to fix like a big pot, and she told something that like, has stuck with me to this day is how she said everything that we do in this lab everything that we do to a specific artifact has to be able to be undone. So like whatever adhesive that they add, whatever glue they need to add to the artifact, it can be removed. And that's like something that they stand by. It has to be important for conservation. Um, and I don't know uh, if you guys know, but in the background is the, cal the acid calendar. It's like one of the most important pieces of Mexico. And just being able to see that every day and like work right next to it was, I don't know. So yeah, um, I didn't get credit for this because when I did it, I didn't know I had to be pre-approved. So again, <laughs> talk to Bob before you do anything of that sort. And how he said, the 503 requirements is a lot more flexible now. So maybe internships can count and like museums, but again, you have to talk to them about that. That's just like another opportunity or thing that if you're interested in, you can pursue. Um, 